Did a little shopping and the thing that I bought was a load bank. Uh, load banks, for those of you that don't know, are something that you can use to test a generator uh, in terms of power production. Uh, in this particular case, I bought this load bank to test my MEP 804. Uh, but before we get to the load bank, what we need to do is I would really like to change the oil in this MEP 804. So what I'm gonna do is fire it up and uh, let it run for a little bit, get a little warm, uh, not hot by any means, probably run it for two or three minutes, just to get the oil nice and circulated in there, uh, get any, any debris that's in the oil pan stuff up and, and kind of, or, or sludge or whatever you want to call it, uh, moving around. And then we will do an oil change and then we can test it using our load bank, which I will go over here in a little bit. All right, let's see if we can fire it up. Do a little preheat. sit there and warm up for a little bit and then we'll work on changing the oil all right so there's an oil drain here on the end of the machine that comes from or the end of the generator I guess it comes from the oil pan and it's just a half inch square drive plug what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take I've already loosened the plug up just using a ratchet I thought. There we go. So the plug's out. I'm actually going to take and install just a brass piece of pipe. And if you can see, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble because the, the frame here is bent. And so it's not going to necessarily drain like I want it to, but it's going to drain. So then what I can do is I can open up this door, hopefully it clears that. And in here, there is a valve and you just turn it. And hopefully, oil pours out. So there should be six quarts in there. I'm gonna go ahead and let six quarts drain out and then we'll change the oil filter. And after we do that, we will put new oil in. So this will take a little bit. I'm gonna let it sit here and drain, and then we'll go from there. So in, in the engine compartment here, and we are on, as you look from the control panel, we would be on the right-hand side of the generator. You have your oil filter, and then you have your fuel filter down here, or fuel water separator. Uh, well, because it's upside down, it creates a little bit of a, of a challenge. When we take it off there, it is gonna drip down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put, that oil pan in here just hopefully I can find something that I can just kind of weasel my way in here and then just set it right here so it catches any of the oil that drips down uh, I mean there shouldn't be too much because the oil system is almost done draining uh, but that's it's always one of those things when you have oil filters like this it's just a little bit of a pain so uh, I'm gonna work on that trying to find something to get under there and we will go from there now something I can do is I can go ahead and see if I can drain oil out of this oil sample valve right there if you can pick that up on the camera this is the oil sample valve i can go ahead and open that up see if i can get uh, some more oil out of there uh, before i take the filter off so i'll do that so let me get set up for that and we will change the oil filter not the best shot but we'll go ahead and open that drain valve nothing's coming out of the drain valve that's good so we'll go ahead and close it and now we will uh, take the oil filter off. Uh, probably reposition the camera here to get you a better uh, view. All right, let's see if we can get this oil filter off without tearing up any wires here. Yeah. 
And as per usual, He-Man put it on. I don't know why people put oil filters on at 200 foot pounds of torque. <clears throat> I mean, to me, it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, now I'm exhausted. All right, so let's see how much of a mess we can make. A little bit of oil in there. Let me see if I open the drain valve again just to see if any could come out. There we go. Go figure. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to let that drip for a minute. Um, just going to let it sit here and drip and then I'll get in there and clean it up. So um, that's just a matter of wiping everything down. So we'll do that. Um, so I'll do that and then we'll start put the filter, new filter on and we'll add oil. All right. So new filter. This is just Napa Gold 1523. Picked it up this morning. Um, I actually ended up going to Napa. Oh, the instructions say, make sure, well, clean mounting base, make sure the old gasket's removed, done. Apply clean oil to the new gasket, check. Uh, do not use grease, check. Make sure new gasket is seated in groove on filter, done that. And then screw filter onto base until gasket make contact and then tighten three quarters of a turn refill and run engine or system check oil pressure and check for leaks uh, please dispose of use filter in accordance with all regulations thank you for flying whatever airline okay our filter has now made contact with the base now we need to tighten an additional three quarters of a turn not eight turns So I can actually do most of that just with two hands. And that should be good. We started with it right here. Now the edge of the instructions is right there. I would say that's three quarters of a turn after the contact with the base. Hopefully, I have, I've had pretty good luck doing oil filters like that and not, you know, trying to, to uh, you know, he-man it on there with a torque wrench. So set to 200 foot pounds. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all this junk, all the oil I spilt, and uh, then we'll uh, shut off the oil drain, which it's still, still dripping a little bit. So we'll shut off the oil drain and then we'll refill it with oil. So let's talk about the load bank for a few minutes um, before we get into the test. And, and honestly, we're probably uh, far enough into this video that uh, their test will probably be in part two because I really wanna explain a couple things about this load bank because there was not, uh, there was no manual that I could find online for this load bank. So this is a Department of Defense test set electrical 0 to 33 kilowatts, a TS-4216G, model number LCNFM1, right there. It was manufactured in 3 of 87. It was also remanufactured in 1993 um, or overhauled in 1993. Uh, this is designed to test, and the reason that I wanted to go over all the particulars of this load set, or this load bank, is it's designed to test 240 volt, volt three phase, 208 volt three phase, 120 single phase, 416 three phase, and 240 one phase. Three wires, four wires, two wires, four wires, two wires. This is the connection legend right here, C and D, and so on and so forth. So. The MEP-804 is set up for 208, 
Um, and so if you look, we're actually gonna walk over to the MEP and we're gonna go right over here. So you have to remember the MEP is not traditionally designed, this 804 is not traditionally designed for single phase, nor can, can it be easily converted to single phase, much like the older 00 units, so the 004, 005, 006, I believe. Uh, but you can switch from 12208 to 24416. You can test both of these with this load bank. You can also test single phase. Um, so we have it set at 12208, uh, three phase for this uh, for this generator. That's what it's set at. So what it says for a 208 three phase is CDB. What on earth does that mean? Well, here's the connection legend CDB. Well, B is N1 to E1. So if you look right here, here is E1. This is also our ground right here. So N1 to E1 is a bus bar right there. Next is, we already, so we covered B, so now we're gonna cover C. C is P1 to J2, and D is P2 to J1. Now, there's no P's or J's over here. I could not figure out what that meant. So, what I did, actually with the help of a friend, uh, we kind of muddled through this problem together. And these are just quarter turn screws that hold this on, if I can get it off one-handed. Here is the electrical diagram for this unit. I'm just gonna see if I can pick this up one-handed and we're gonna take it over here and put it up here like this so I can explain this. So here's the wiring diagram, which just looks incredibly complicated to me. I have no earthly idea what it means. And here is P1, P2, J1, J2, and they're all interconnected, and I didn't know what that meant. And then J2, P2, P1, J1. All right, what does that mean? Well, if you look around the machine long enough, and when it's down on the ground like this, you really can't see what you're looking for. Well then, if you look in here, there is a J2 right there, and a J1 right there. What about the P's, right? Well, long enough looking, the P's are the bundles of wire. So P1 is connected to J2, as it should be, and J1 is connected to P2, as it should be. So that's what we have to do for C and D down here. Now. What's really important, because this is a three phase, there is no BB here for F. So if you notice on the single phase, it says F right here. F is BB to L1, 2, and 3. This is BB, L1, 2, and 3. So to test this as a three phase piece of equipment, we have to take this bar out. You cannot have this bar in here. So you take the bar out. I'm just going to set it right there. So that, and then we're going to hook up the wires. Um, I'm actually going to use uh, two different, this machine actually came with a three wire um, connection. And so what I've done, because wire is expensive, I had 50 feet of, um, I think this is uh, eight gauge wire. I had 50 feet of four, four wire, eight gauge wire that I have hooked into the ground. I'm just gonna use the green for the ground. And then I'm gonna use the three phases here uh, for L1, two, and three coming off this thing. And my ground and neutral are hooked together. So uh, we should be good to go there. Now I've already, I've already tested this, this unit out, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I played with it for a little bit the other night, but it was pitch black dark and I was doing it by a headlamp because I was excited when I got the load bank because I wanted to see if it even turned on. Um, so let me get this hooked up to the load bank and I'll go over that system and then maybe at the end of this video we'll do just a brief test of the load bank and we'll go from there. All right, I'll go over the controls of this load bank here. <clears throat> Basically what happens is, is you have your main breaker that turns the power on, that turns the fans on, which I'll show you here in just a second. And then you have your master load switch over here. So you turn this on, um, because when you turn this on, then all of your load banks are activated. So 
I'm gonna leave that off. And we have one, two, three, four, five. You can see that, uh, or sorry, four. We have four uh, six kilowatt load switches. So that's 24 kilowatts. We have a three to get us to 27 another three to get us to 30, and then a variable three to get us to 33. And the variable load is right here, and you just use this, uh, I guess it'd be a rheostat, I don't know, um, to uh, basically turn up the power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire the generator up. We'll just do a quick test of it uh, to make sure it's producing stuff, and I'll show you how it works. And then in the next video, We'll do some uh, more, uh, some, some tests. Uh, we'll crank it up to maybe um, 18 kilowatts, something like that. Uh, see what kind of load we can put uh, this generator on under. So here we go. All right, so I have about three minutes of SD card left to get this started. So hopefully this is uh, still warm. for just a minute because it's cooled down some I've, I've already tested the oil and everything so it's good so uh, I'll come back in about a couple minutes when it's up let it warm up all right so I'm gonna go ahead and open the circuit so it's producing power now let's look at the controls on the load bank Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this breaker on. Well, it worked the other day. When you turn this power on right here, it turns three fans on. And to get the load, what happens is these fans cool heating elements. So all those heating elements right there are being cooled by those fans. So just for good measure, as I've got about a minute left here, we're just gonna turn on one six kilowatt load. turn on a six kilowatt load we forgot to do one step but turn on the master load switch now you can apply a load there you go so at six kilowatts we're using 40 percent of uh, power or 30 percent of, of current so what I'll do, while the camera does it, still has a little bit of SD card, we'll go ahead and uh, crank it up to 18 kilowatts, and maybe I'll get all this in one video. Seconds of SD card left. So uh, we actually got the whole test in. Now I'm going to let this sit here and run for a little while uh, at 18 kilowatts. We're going to test it out and go from there. 
Thanks for watching.